Ryan Kittle, MMA Weekly. We're here with victorious Chicagoan, overall badass, Clay Guida. How you doing, my man? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I got one question, a really big question. You're Anthony Pettis. Do you take this fight against you with a title shot on the line? Not against me, against anyone else, yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, he's just a hard-nosed kid, and uh, he's got a lot of confidence, and he's, he's that kid that doesn't want to sit around and wait. You know what I mean? Some guys that bring rust, he won four fights last year, I think, so. I mean, he just wants to stay active and wants to fight the best guys out there, so I commend him for that. Yeah, and he even said in the post-fight press conference that he's got a lot to work on. You know, uh, very reminiscent of a, a young Clay Guida, very uh, cognizant of the fact that, hey, it's a long haul, it's not a sprint. you got a lot to work on, and he seems very open-minded about it. That's good. It just shows me a positive kid. You know, he's not going to let this, you know, get to him. He's going to be right back in the gym. I don't think he has any bumps or bruises, and uh, look for big things that have to pass in the future. Now, you kind of talked to the post-fight press conference about how you'd like to be next in line for the shot. There are so many people right now. The 155 division, especially with the merger, it's just clogged with talent. Dennis Seaver, Jim Miller, all these people. Uh, you know, I, I guess to be to be uh, blunt, what makes you think that you deserve the next shot? Pay my dues, man. People, you know, they've seen I fought the best talent in the XFO world. all the way up. You got him, man. Combat, though. XFO. Extreme strike combat. force. Strike force. Yeah. There you go. Um, I fought the best in the lightweight division. People want to see, you know, the most well, you know, I'm, I'm not the best fighter out there. Everyone, most of my opponents are better, uh, more talented than me, but I got hard for days, man. I'm not going to stop. And if you want to see the most exciting lightweight title fight, I'm going to be part of it. You know, it's interesting. You're a grinder, more so than a lot of people in this sport, and yet you have this ridiculous fan following. I said to one of the reporters next to me, I go, it's like when Clay Guida fights, everyone turns into a knowledgeable fan. <laughs> well, what, what do you think? What can you attribute that to? Uh, we keep a high pace. You know what I mean? There's, there's a grinder that plays and praise, and we, we're always defending submissions. We're, you know, we're, we're getting punches in here and there, and we're taking our opponents down. But you see, I put my hands together a little bit more, too. Um, Anthony tagged me up. I tagged him back. So um, I'm feeling more confident in my hands. It's just tough for the rangy guy like him who's so explosive. We knew the ground game was, you know, was the game plan, and we stick to it. Who would you liken a, a Pettis to, a guy you faced in that career? Because you're such a vet, and you faced explosive strikers with a long reach. When you were building up for this fight, who, who kind of did you look at, uh, you know, to, to maybe even who'd you bring in to help you train for Pettis? Um, a couple of guys right off hand, Cub Swanson, uh, huh? Donald Cerrone. I was going to say Cerrone right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's all rangy guys. Um, John the Magician Dodson flies off the cage. Uh, Carlos Condit, you know, so we all train the same gym. Didn't have to bring anybody in, you know. I had my wrestling coaches, he, uh, Israel Martinez, Izzy Style, helping with my wrestling as always, and uh, that was really the staple in this fight. Were some of those, those uh, some of those submissions he had on the bottom were snake-like. Did some of those surprise you? Like, holy crap, I'm in a triangle right now. It was crazy. <laughs> I, it's like I was just defending, trying to throw his legs past my face the entire time, and I was able to only just squeeze a few punches in here and there. If you saw, I think I threw more shoulders. You did. You had a lot of shoulder shrugs, yeah. I, I actually hit him, so... Um, <laughs> It's one of those exciting ground wars, I guess. You know, let's say, just for, you know, play devil's advocate, let's say you have one more fight before the championship, because you can't say two more, three more, but let's say you get one more before the fight. Is there anyone that you would like to face that you've just been eyeing, that's been on the Gallard, Seaver, any of those guys that are right there in the mix? Uh, Melvin's one of my teammates, you know what I mean? Oh, sure. He's on a win streak, he's fighting Shane Roller. Yep. Uh, Melvin's a buddy of mine. Um, so. And so is Cerrone, and he, yep. I mean, he could arguably yeah, be on there pretty soon. Down's going to smash his guy next week. He's going to walk him into the UFC, and it's not going to be fun for uh, for him. So um, there's just a list of guys out there right now, and um, I'd be happy to uh, fight the winner, Frankie and Gray. There you go. In true uh, Clay Guida fashion, anyone and anyone that they put in front of him, right? That's how we do, man. Right. We put the fights down. Is there anyone you want to thank before we get out here? Uh, I want to thank my mom and dad, and I want to thank the UFC for putting this together, and uh, it's just an honor to be part of this uh, organization. All right, Clay, congrats on a big one. Thank you.